coming to the land and developing claws so that they can dig in the sand and dig in the dirt and get food and all this. But there is no evidence whatsoever for a turtle coming out to the land and becoming a bird. Right? That just doesn't happen. Turtles stay turtles, birds stay birds. And, you know, even with a hundred, almost 100 years since, uh, at least 100 years since Tyron, the experimental studies have been done in laboratory to cross vegetation together and try to get like a rose to become a tulip or a tulip to become a rose, and it just doesn't happen. So there's a fundamental problem. We see micro transformation, but we don't see macro transformation. So what I'm saying to you is that those are, must be more fundamental than just adaptation to the surface. Meaning, there's got to be a fundamental thread of information that produces a turtle, a fundamental thread of information that produces a bird, a fundament. You see, and so, and where is that information coming from? It has to come out of the vacuum. It has to come out of the fundamental thread that connects all things, that allows all these things to come out so that they come out in coordination with each other and they can cohabitate and everything is in the right place, right? So it's a new view, uh, really a new view on evolution and certainly a new view in physics. And what it implies in physics, I'll be able to discuss in more details uh, in the day-long seminar, but, and you'll see it on the DVD if you can't come to the day-long seminar, but um, eventually, it implies that there is a way with, if we understand the fundamental dynamics of that feedback in space-time, um, in which structures um, can be reproduced to tap into that wheel of creation, into that space-time structure, meaning a society that understands the fundamental structure of creation all of a sudden has the means, technologically, to uh, put, a, put a little bit of a wheel on it, if you'd like, so that it can tap into that relationship between what expands and what contracts. All of our current technology is based on expansion. We, you know, our most advanced concept of technology are, are you know, putting fuel, tons of fuel in a rocket you know, in a, in a cylinder, putting a few volunteers on top and lighting up the bottom and, and hoping they're gonna make it, you know? And just, you know, that is, let's say it's the male approach, you know, the brute approach to uh, creation and certainly to beating gravity. And uh, it's quite dangerous and not very effective. Uh, and so, but imagine that we understood better the concept of contraction, of, of implosion, of, of generation instead of radiation, right? What I call general active, actually I took that from um, Walter Russell, general active uh, instead of radioactive. So that if we tapped into the general active vacuum structure, we would have access to energy you know, in excess of, you know, whatever we could imagine. And, and we would start to have capacities that may look today as miracles. I mean, the capacity to start, you know, manifesting things right out of the vacuum and so on. Uh, as well, the capacity to uh, change the structure of space-time to create gravitational fields and, and so on. So that's one thing. But as well, a society that understands these principles starts to understand the thread of their relationship to the universe all the way back to their origin, all the way back through the fractal nature of space. You start to connect with the fundamental power of your existence, and beings that reach that level have very high level of capacity to move information through, meaning more, it's like the, if the universe is truly a feedback, it's just like an electrical circuit. There's just, an electrical circuit is a kind of feedback. It has a positive lead and a negative lead, and the electrons are moving from negative to positive. And when 
you, and what's in between is a resistor, right? If you take the two leads and you short them, then you know everything blows up. But in between is always a resistor. The resistor is you. You are the resistor in that feedback of space time between the energy, between the information that's going out and the information that's coming in. And you're changing it every time that it goes through. And your world is adjusting to continue to feed you the information so that you continue to learn. And what changes the amount of information that's going through that is the ohm edge of that resistor. <laughs> right? And so if you can reduce the resistance, then there is less impedance and the information can move through faster and faster. And you become more aligned and learn faster and and grow to understanding higher thoughts of relationship with the universe than thoughts of separation and uh, competition. A uh, similar event happened on our planet um, millions of years ago. Our planet almost went to extinction millions of years ago where microbes were producing too much pollutants at the time. That was oxygen for them. And they were all dying. And they were in competition mode, and they went almost to extinction until uh, they figured out that they better collaborate, otherwise they were going to all die. And they started to collaborate, and they produce, um, you know, I'm giving you this in a nutshell, really, but they produce a, a multicellular system that started to breed the oxygen, right? And they beat it. And then eventually all this complexity of our biosphere emerged from it. And that came from a change from competition to collaboration. That's all that was needed. And I believe that now the fractal analogy is that we are a bunch of microbe at the next fractal level, right? And we're learning that very same lesson. And we got to get it real quick uh, because we're at that point of high stress in our capacity to survive. So, and, and I believe that, that learning the fundamental structure of the vacuum, how it applies to physics and technology and how it applies to consciousness is fundamental to really realizing who we are and our relationship to the universe. And, and by doing so, realizing our commonality that we all have that singularity within ourselves, that we all come from the same center. I tell people, we live on a planet, right? It's round, you know? all of our heads are diverging, right? We're all individual, all our heads are diverging, but all of our feet are converging to the same point that connects us all, that same gravitational field, that same singularity. I mean it philosophically and literally, and that, understanding that we are all on the same boat and that we better collaborate I think is gonna clobber us in the sa in the next few uh, years uh, I, I, I believe very quickly and and it's gonna allow really new level of uh, physics and new level of technology to emerge so uh, thank you very much And uh, if you can, come to the seminar on Sunday. I think there's sign-up sheets in the back. And uh, is there questions? <laughs> uh, the only thing, uh, the question is, I'm saying the only thing that, exi that makes sense is that energy is infinite. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay. But yes qualified, meaning that there is an infinite amount of energy. I believe, uh, because there is infinite amount of possibility of division. And so that would produce infinite density and singularity and infinite amount of energy. But the, the energy that's available is the energy in which that you're dealing with in the context of a scale in the fractal structure of space, right? But even in the context of a scale, if we could tap into 0, 0.00 something percent of the energy of the vacuum at our scale, we would still be dealing with much more energy that we could ever use. So that's very interesting. My question is, um, 
how do you envision one would access these structures? Just like you need an accelerator mm -hmm. to start looking at smaller and smaller particles, do you have a vision of, I mean, what would that look like in uh, your mind? Right. Huh. Okay. Um, the, um, you know, during the day long seminar, I'll be able to answer that better. Okay, good. Um, but in general, first of all, I, I think that is the main thing is, and what I'm trying to convey here is that it's important for the individuals to connect with that energy in themselves. You know, that, that you are one of those things that's tapping into the vacuum energy because if you weren't, you wouldn't be here. Like, I, I give you an example. Every atom you're made of is spinning continuously at near the speed of light. I mean, the electron, anyway. And you're not pumping them, you're not doing anything. 